Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. Hey there, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. I am absolutely honored that you have joined the number one industrial-related podcast in the universe, and this is where we, this platform, what we are doing is about you and celebrating you. We celebrate the industrial professionals. We celebrate the companies that get it done. You are all bold, brave. You dare greatly. You innovate. Boy, do you innovate. And we thank you each and every day. That's why you deserve the celebration we bring on this particular podcast. Now, we continue our series on heroes of manufacture because they're unsung and they're wonderful people. The women and men, absolutely. And we're talking to a gentleman by the name of Greg V. Hill. Now, the last, the spelling of his last name is V-I-G-I-L, but it's pronounced V. Hill. So don't make a mistake about that. He's with a small little dainty company called Microsoft. And you don't know what we're talking about? That's right. Here's the manufacturing and how Microsoft is truly helping us through this unique life that we're living through this pandemic. So let's get going. It is amazing to me. Just me. It's amazing to me. It could be amazing to you too, but it's amazing to me. And what it is, is the fact that you don't realize how much companies, manufacturers impact your life in a positive way. You, we, 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 me, me, I don't want to push it on you, but we take it for granted. I take it for granted. I take it for granted that I can do the podcast and use the technology that's available. I take it for granted that I can save it to the cloud and everything's fine and I get up and I have my egg sandwich and, and we just move along. I take it for granted. But you know what happens? We have people behind the scenes that make it happen. Those are the heroes. Those are the manufacturing people that we are celebrating on the heroes of manufacturing. And Microsoft and, and Greg and his team <clears throat> saw the need, the necessity for companies to be virtual in a matter of a jet second because that switch, that whole COVID switch was flipped in a jet second. And now all of a sudden companies are saying, we still got to do business. We still got to do stuff. And here's Microsoft. Here, here's a solution. This is what we can do. I understand that you got to work remotely. Boom, here it is. Greg and his team were fantastic. And in this interview... He highlights all that, and it's it's pretty doggone cool stuff. Now, you're saying to yourself, Scott, how do I get involved? How can I nominate somebody? Because I know people who are just absolutely wonderful manufacturing people. Okay. Manufacturers and, and, and anybody that you want to nominate, go to heroesofmanufacturing.com, and it's there. You click a button. You nominate. You do what you need to do. And I'll be talking to you, and I will make it a point of talking to you, and we'll get you on. And you're saying, how can I get involved? Well, you could get involved by just celebrating in, in conjunction with all of the 30 other plus manufacturers and associations that are a part of this movement. You can celebrate with us, and you can share, and you can comment, and you can do everything that you possibly can to help celebrate these heroes of manufacturing. That's what you can do. That is what we're asking you. And it's not that big of a deal. It's out there. It's all on that digital world that we live in today, especially now because of the, the COVID. All right, let's get on with the interview. Gentleman's name, once again, Greg Vigil, V-I-G-I-L. And then if you want to look at him out in the stack card, he's very active out there. Stack card, LinkedIn stack card. Put a little Microsoft in front uh, after his name, and you, boom, you'll find him with no problem whatsoever. We're talking about why digitization is important, how it has helped, and the and the the solutions that Microsoft have provided during this transition to the virtual world that we are so much enjoying right now, and they have put out the people and the focus and the purpose to be able to maintain that business continuity as much as we possibly can in this very challenging time. So you listeners out there, enjoy this particular conversation with Greg V. Hill. Microsoft is the company, and we're talking about heroes 
of manufacturing absolutely enjoy. Hey, Greg, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. I'm so honored that you said yes to being on this particular podcast. How are you doing? Doing great. Sunny day in Denver. Can't beat that. I like Denver. We had that conversation pre-interview here. We were talking about Denver and wonderful town that is and the great people and food. And, and of course, we did mention beer. We did. But that's a great place, too. Anyway, hey, for the listeners out there, Greg, give us a little, uh, you know, 411, a little background on who you are and, and why you're such a great professional. And then we'll just get on into the interview of Heroes of Manufacturing. Sure. Thanks for having me on. I'm okay. excited to be on and have the conversation. So been at micro, <clears throat> excuse me, been at Microsoft seven years now. So uh, seeing the kind of transformation to the cloud, um, currently manage our U.S. manufacturing team. So we have a team of specialists and architects and technologists that help aid manufacturers in their digital transformation. And part of how I ended up here is I spent 14 years at a manufacturer before joining Microsoft. So I was at Gates Rubber Company, Gates Corporation, global belt, hose, and hydraulic manufacturer. So I've lived on the shop floor to the executive suite and so I'm leveraging that to help our customers now. Well, I got to tell you, man, this is going to be an interesting conversation because um, manufacturing, of course, has been uh, sort of kicked in the chops here lately with the whole pandemic. And uh, as, as we celebrate the heroes of manufacturing, one of the topics that has come up, come up uh, time and time again, and that is uh, how does a manufacturing, given the fact that the, <laughs> one day they were doing fine and the next day <laughs> it wasn't doing fine, uh, deal with this sort of necessity to be more resilient. And so forth, the topic has always come back to we need to be more in the cloud. We need more digitization. We need to be able to do that to become more nimble in times like this. Can you explain a little bit about that? Sure. It's been interesting because I've been at this for about three and a half years in helping manufacturers. And having come from manufacturing, typically you want to set stuff up, you want to run it, and you want to leave it alone, <laughs> right? And so the adoption of the cloud for manufacturing has probably been slower than most other industries. Versus now, we've seen, as Satya Nadella, our CEO, puts it, we've seen two years of digital transformation in two months, right? Because you look back and, for example, Teams, our remote work tool, most manufacturers had plans to deploy it or plans to go to it. Yeah. And literally overnight, they moved thousands of workers to Teams and sent them remote, right? Yeah. Even so, I've had, I've done a number of roundtables with customers. I think I've spoken with about 100 different uh, executives at our various customers. And little things like they, most of them didn't have work remote policies, right? Because as manufacturers, like the shop floor in the back <laughs> office, you want to see your people. And so that's dramatically changed, right? Because now they're all rethinking, wait, our workers can be productive. We can still achieve things. Yes. Um, so it's interesting. And I do think it's created that challenge, but I think many manufacturers that are taking an opportun opportunistic view are going to see great results coming out of this, right? The ability to leverage AI and other new Let me technology. ask you this. Why is this so important for manufacturers? Why? I mean, there, there seems to be definitely a push today more than ever, but why? What, what's facilitating that? What benefits? What, you know, what are we seeing? Yeah, I think there's a couple things. Agility is probably one of the primary ones, right? Your ability to adapt and react much more quickly. And again, something like COVID we've never seen. But our Microsoft manufacturing team, where we do about eight and a half billion dollars in Surface product, Xbox, those types of things, they started seeing the impact of COVID obviously early on because we manufacture in China, we sell yeah. in China, and they were literally able to rerun scenarios about rerouting supply chains in a matter of minutes and hours versus in the past. It may have taken a couple of weeks to do that. So agility is one of them, right? ability to adapt quickly. That is interesting because uh, I've had a number of conversations with a bunch of uh, manufacturers and we were talking about just the, the, the challenges with sourcing and the logistics and the changes and the countries, everything. It's, it's, I like that, that, uh, uh, I like agility. That is a good, that's a good value. Absolutely. 
And I think the second big one is just obviously operational efficiency and cost containment, which I think over the next six to nine months, we're going to see a, a major push. I lived through 2008, 2009, uh, working in a manufacturer, right, where you saw a massive downturn in business and you had to adapt and get much more cost efficient. And that's the other thing the cloud's going to do, whether it be just taking cost out by moving um, servers and other things off premises and then being able to pay by the minute for that cloud computing capability is just kind of a core IT thing. But then when you look at artificial intelligence, IoT, shop floor predictive maintenance, those types of things, companies that have taken that journey are able to make leaps and bounds in productivity gains um, that the cloud is going to enable. So that that's probably the other big conversation we have is how do we help you drive cost out of the business using these technologies that aren't even available in your data center. See, what's interesting is that withhold the, the digitization movement, whatever you want, industry 4.0, manufacturing 4.0, whatever the 4.0 we're, we're dealing with, it also facilitates you, uh, Microsoft, and your team to also begin pushing the envelope of innovation as well. You can't, you, you can't just say, okay, I saw the market beforehand and then there's some interest and we can sort of drag our feet. Now you, you're, you're forced or you're motivated to try to continue to push that envelope in innovation as well. Because I've had multiple conversations about that too as well, like AI. And, and, and tell me this. One day, the cloud was not good, and it was hard. And now all of a sudden, story, everything's in the cloud. What, what, what was that event that took place? Well, obviously, COVID. Um, <laughs> today, for manufacturers, that literally was it, right? I think you saw yeah. other industries like retail, yeah. financial services, where they had to move faster because the market was going yeah. there. Again, a uh, uh, I'll give you a great example of you mentioned how it's going to push Microsoft to transform our products even. Yes. Right. So we've got teams, obviously all, all of the manufacturers I spoke to moved to teams uh, because they were probably already using another Microsoft product. But interestingly, Kaizen yeah. events, right? You need 20 people in a conference room with a whiteboard to do a Kaizen event. And on a couple of these round tables, they were customer to customer dialogues where it wasn't Microsoft uh, leading with anything. It was how can we help? You know, what are you doing? What do you need from us? So interestingly, one of the customers shared that they'd moved their Kaizen events to Teams, right? They created a structure, were able to use the whiteboard tools, had some very successful outcomes. They shared that with other customers. The other customers on the call were like, wait, can you show us how to do that? And then I actually took that customer and connected them with our team's product team to rethink like, hey, there's some scenarios we hadn't thought for those first line workers. You know, how do you do something like a Kaizen event on a virtual environment where you know, in the past you needed people on the shop floor doing that? So it's definitely helped direct even our product teams as we adapt and these manufacturers rapidly move to the cloud and then realize, hey, there's some things that we need that aren't product isn't serving us well today. So it's exciting to see some of those things where they didn't think it was possible in the past. And all of a sudden they're doing these and being able to include, you know, not just people from that factory, but maybe even people worldwide. So there's definitely, you know, some basic examples like that. But then obviously the broader examples that AI and other things that are definitely harder to do, but I think companies are taking this opportunity to move more rapidly. Uh, I think, you know, yeah. Once again, swift tick, uh, kick in the teeth, no doubt about it. Yeah, there's a, a lot that, uh, a lot of pain out there. Got it, fine. But there's this other side of this coin that is somewhat uh, optimistic. One, uh, we, we, we have to be more colla uh, collaborative. We have to, like you're talking about these Kaizen events, we have to, and we have to be creative about it because it's very valuable. And I think there's greater engagement. That's one. Two, I think there's a push for greater innovation. We don't want to do this again. We need to create something that has greater resiliency. So there's innovation and we've got to learn and we've got to push that envelope. And what I'm hoping is that, all these theoretical things like AI, AI is great. 
but it's still sort of, hey, it's AI. Yeah. This is what it's going to do. Now it's going to get real. Now we're going to have to see it in a commercial environment. And I, I, I like that. I like to see that happening. Don't like to see the pain. Yep. But unfortunately, you know, it is what it is, whatever the, whatever the motivation or the, the, the force is. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the Microsoft team. How have they dealt with this whole COVID challenge? Sure. Um, obviously, for Microsoft, it was probably easier than most companies in many respects, right? Yeah. Because we, everybody already had teams. We had the tools. Yet in our campus in Redmond, that tens of thousands, 50 plus thousand employees that do work on site um, in Microsoft buildings. So they were early on in moving people out of the, the work environment and sending them home. Right. So you certainly have had that move myself. It wasn't as big of an adjustment because I run a national team. So I'm either on the road or at home anyway. So for me, it wasn't a big adjustment to start working from home full time. Right. Right. Um, so we've had that, but then just in terms of, again, going back to Sach, our CEO, he constantly is talking to our team about being the first responders to the first responders. Right. So everybody rolled up their sleeve you know, if you look at things like homeschool, you know, schooling at home, uh, we deployed millions of students on teams to be able to, to allow them to do school from home. So we took a very forward um, approach to what is it we can do today to help our customers adapt to this challenge, right? And so you've had that element. And then there's other things that that we've done using our supply chain expertise and shipping in PPE yes. to hospitals in Seattle, right? They've been really forward thinking about how do we help the community, not just Microsoft, because again, I think our adaptation was easier than other companies. I know I read an interview with our CEO and he was saying, you know, that Kroger and Costco and these guys are or Walmart, are like, Hey, it's, we're going to work so your people can work at home right? Because we have to go to the stores I and like serve that. the food, but your teams are able to stay at home. So, you know, we need your help in adapting our business to this new reality. See, that is the unsung hero. That's the unsung story that people just take for granted. You brought up an interesting point, And that point is, you know, yesterday we were going to school and we were in brick and mortar. Today, it's all at home. And we don't, we, we, that shift happens so rapidly. We didn't have things in place but because of Microsoft, because of the team at Microsoft, because of the people of Microsoft, you recognize the importance of your, your business in, in, in moving this forward and in, in facilitating solutions that are needed. I mean, that is, that's exact, and it doesn't just stop there with the, like, I'm on a, on a computer and it's a, it's a Microsoft product. I'm, I'm, I, that's what I use. And nothing's, and, and nothing's stopped for me. And if it wasn't for that, I don't know where I would be. Yeah. One song. So it's, it's actually made me, I, I've been proud to be at Microsoft, but seeing the response, the way we reacted, right? Not asking questions, just jumping in first and going to customers. How can we help? Right? Yeah. Other examples where there was a hospital system up in Canada that was trying to figure out how do they send 3000 workers at home. And they, they had called a Microsoft account team like, Hey, we need some infrastructure. And the account team started asking questions. Well, what are you trying to do? What do you need it for? And they helped them understand we've got tools to where you can create those virtual desktops fairly quickly. So the team wow. leaned in worked 24 hours a day, over the weekend and by Monday was able to help the customer deploy 3000 people to all of a sudden be able to work from home. So it's been interesting and, and great to watch because, you know, it's been an environment where we've really just stepped back and said, you know, we've got the tools and capabilities to help, but we need to understand what our customers need. That's how I've talked with a hundred customers in the last four to five weeks is because we're just getting on calls and saying what's happening and letting customers talk to each other. Cause we've even had calls where, you know, they're asking how do you deal with physical mail, right? Microsoft's not going to solve for that, but other customers on the call have been able to say, well, here's how we've handled you know, those types of situations. 
See, I love that collaboration because we don't have all the answers. You know, you come from the perspective of Microsoft, powerful, uh, influential, and needed. And then somebody says, what about physical? I, I, don't, have the, I don't have the answers, but somebody does. And, yeah. and, and it's through that collaborative spirit that we achieve this sort of overall insight. Because what also, I'm sorry, I, I stopped it right there, but what also is interesting is how fast, how a big company like Microsoft can be so nimble and recognize it's like, just like the economy just sort of shifted. You guys also shifted your thinking and, and because people don't have answers. It's like, now I got to be remote. What, what do I do there? I have no clue. Yep. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just enamored by the fact that you guys did that so quickly. Now, with all that said, with all the, the, the kudos going out to you and your team, um, who would you like to sort of thank in this whole world and just say, gosh, this would be great. They were wonderful. They stepped right up. They did this and, and so on and so forth. Do you have anybody you want to sort of highlight? Yeah, interesting. I'll take a little bit different slant. I'd like to thank my family and others like my family, my son. So this was supposed to be a big year, right? My wife and I were going to are celebrating our 25th anniversary. We had plans to go on a nice trip. And then my son was gradu graduated high school a couple of weeks ago. And just the resilience that my family and so many people's families have kind of rolled with during these times, right? Because it could be very frustrating and upsetting. But, you know, for my son, it was supposed to be a big event and then it was just a thud, right? Like one day he comes down from, from the little home office, we set him up in his room and he's like, well, I turned on my last assignment, I'm done with school, <laughs> right? And it was kind of like, thud. but he, you know, stayed, stayed happy, stayed positive about the whole yeah. thing. You know, some missed, missed things certainly there. Same you know, with my wife, it's unfortunate we missed that celebration that we'd been planning for a year, but you know, again, kind of just rolled with it and uh, missed some of those moments, but you know, not only my family, but I know there's a lot of other families that had graduations, weddings, other yeah. things like that. So you know, that, to me, those that were able to deal with that with resilience and kind of move on, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I like that perspective because um, you, you all, it's one of those, it's sort of, it's uncomfortable, but it's also uh, the fact that everybody's dealing with it, right? Makes you part of a bigger group that, like, yeah, my, you know, for example, my son just graduated with a master's in kinesiology. And the same thing happened. Mm. Well, that's it. It's like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Hey, what's in the, what's, uh, what's for dinner? <laughs> that's sort of the, <laughs> the, the progress, right? But, but yeah, you're absolutely, and it's like everybody understands. And, and life will come back. But right now, we just have to just be patient and let things sort of get get going and, and, and rolling. Well, let me ask you this, um, Greg. Are, are you active out on LinkedIn? Yes, for sure. Uh, I love LinkedIn. I live, obviously, a Microsoft property. So another reason oh, to is. pay attention to it. Okay. Very good. I like that a lot. Okay. So listeners out there, you need to get a hold of Greg. Now, it's... His last name is spelled V-I-G-I-L, but it's pronounced V-Hill. So that's Greg V-Hill, V-I-G-I-L. Put a comment in there. Type in Microsoft. You'll find the gent. Reach out to him. He's got great uh, strategies, stories, and solutions associated with anything digitization, cloud, you name it. If anything, he, has, he, he knows where to go with it. Greg, thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk Podcast and yeah. being a part of the Heroes of Manufacturing movement. Yeah, and thanks for having me. And I like your backdrop. If you're looking out at the video, he's got a guitar, and he's uh, it's nice and warm and cozy. It's so it's so Colorado-ish. Yes, absolutely. All right, you listeners, stay tuned. Do not go away. We will be right back, and I'll wrap it up on the other side. So thank you. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. All right, once again, thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk podcast. That, again, was Greg V. Hill. He's with Microsoft. He has mad skills. His team has mad skills. They are passionate about the heroes of manufacturing. That company, those individuals, 
help make this sort of challenging time a little bit more bearable. In fact, a lot more bearable just because we all of a sudden are in a virtual world. We're able to continue our conversation. We're able to have these these face-to-face opportunities. Fantastic. Wonderful story. Let's celebrate Microsoft. Let's celebrate the people that work with Greg V. Hill. And as you're, you're saying, again, hey, I like this. I like this a lot, Scott. Again, heroesofmanufacturing.com is the place that you start this journey. You jump on the train right there. You say, hey, I want to nominate somebody. Boom, there it is. Nominate. If you were saying, hey, Scott, how do I get more involved? Boom, there it is. Get involved. We need more people. Be a part of that ever-growing community of manufacturers and associations that are here dedicated to celebrating the heroes of manufacturing. These women, these men who just do their job to make our life better and keeping the world moving. That is what it's all about. Thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk Podcast. Be bold, be brave, dare greatly, innovate like manufacturers and change the world. Thank you very much. We'll be back.